Hi, my name is Joe, and welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio, where I use this content to trick you into thinking I'm capable of playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game on any kind of level at all, part of the burden of being the best YouTuber in my street. So why don't you go ahead and hit subscribe for me, whether it's just because you like trash tier content or maybe just because you pity me. I don't mind either way, I just need every bit of help I can get. This content is brought to you in association with my Chungai buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. If you want to find excellently priced singles or maybe you just want to shift some of that cardboard crack you have a little bit too much of, they'll be more than happy to give you the hookup. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio, it's Joe here. Of course, we're back for another Monday Market Watch to take a look at the European side of the market. Apologies in advance if there is any kind of weird noises. You can probably hear my fucking idiot hound behind me snoring already. I'm pretty sure he's been asleep for about 10 seconds. I'm not sure he's even asleep. I think he just makes that sound all the time. And that other one in the corner, which luckily he's a little bit quieter than this one behind me, thank God. In any case, today's market watch, we're going to be taking a look primarily at Rise of the Duelist and Toon Chaos. I wanted to take a look at the more pricey cards from each of the sets. Of course, Rise of the Duelist being the latest release, we are very interested in that. Um, but also, I wanted to take a look at Toon Chaos just to see how those prices are settling now, especially in particular the stuff like the, uh, what's the one? Infernoble cards. That's the word I'm looking for. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully, you enjoyed this enough to hit subscribe. Maybe you should do so now before you realize this content is absolutely fucking garbage. If this is not your first time on the channel, I don't know why you are back or what the hell is wrong with you. But I guess thank you either way for being here. But that's enough of my fucking waffling. Let's get stuck in to the market watch. Okay, so we are kicking off today's Market Watch by taking a look at Forbidden Droplet from Rise of the Duelist. This has been an interesting one, and for those of you who are new here, the kind of standard that we go for is in English, and anything from good condition or above, we know obviously you get factory defects and that kind of thing, especially at the moment, it does seem to be a rising issue. But nonetheless, we're going to head and take a look at what this is coming in at. Now, this is definitely one of the best cards in the set, as it's used against me a couple of times today at Locals. Absolutely wild, in fact... More often than not, it cost me the game when it was resolved. So, absolutely fantastic card to get hold of. In my opinion, it's actually probably the best card to pick up, despite the fact that people are looking at triple tactical talent, or whatever the hell it's called. I think that this is probably the better card to go for, at least in my opinion and from my experience today. We are seeing these for around 66 euros or so, all the way up towards that 65, 70 mark, depending on where you buy from. Uh, it has been considerably higher, and I do think that it could actually potentially creep up a little again. Again, uh, I certainly don't see it coming down too much more than it is now if it does come down at all. So maybe something to consider picking up soon. Of course, over the next couple of weeks, we'll have a better idea. Those first few weeks is always just a bedding in of prices. A lot of stuff tanks, some weird stuff will go up. So I imagine Forbidden Droplets will be no exception and we'll see a big fluctuation over the next week or so. Whether that's up or down, time will tell. Here we go, Triple Tactics Talent, one of the most chased after cards in this set. Slightly cheaper than Droplets, uh, around 60 euros is the going rate. I imagine, again, that this will be one that we see sat around here for a while. It is important to note that, at least from what I'm seeing, the OCG actually isn't running this as highly as maybe we might have thought. And I think that this only works in a certain kind of deck. It is a fantastic card, don't get me wrong. But there is kind of certain decks that it will work in. I do think it will maintain a really good value because it will be considered kind of a staple. Someone that you probably should have a, a you know a play set of in your collection for if you need it. But again, only certain decks really want to gain access to this card and can really take full advantage of it. We're moving on to Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, uh, absolutely tanking through the floor at the moment. You can get these as cheap as just under six euros a pop. These were about 20 only a few days ago. Unsurprising, this is one of the ones that settled. Unfortunately, pendulums are not in a very good place, even with the release of the Chaos Dragon, which is just simply better in every deck other than pendulums. Uh, we see another Odd Eyes card come out, and it doesn't seem to have really rejuvenated anything. We're not seeing much in the way of pendulums being played. Of course, the format is a bit of a weird one, so we are just going off kind of online tournaments and locals that people are attending but i'm not seeing much going on with this and it's not really surprising that we're seeing the price go down the way it is Next, you move on to one of my personal favorite cards from the set, Chaos Ruler. I think this is a really big sleeper card. I think it's insane that it's as cheap as it is. This is one of the things about having more secrets in the box and, of course, not having these short prints uh, in the main sets. It is driving down the overall price of the majority 
of secrets. Those chase cards are still really high, but the other ones tend to bomb through the floor. And that's what we're seeing here, €6.50. I actually think this is a fantastic pickup at this kind of price. We actually may see this even going slightly lower over time. I do think that that's the way it will go. And I do think that this is something you should really consider picking up. If you're going to run any kind of chaos build, this is going to be absolutely crucial to your tactics. Next, we're looking at one of my hot tips for this set. I am convinced that this is going to go up from where it is. I reckon we'll see it hitting its original prices of the 7 to 8 euro mark. Currently, they're around 550. The overall trend at the moment is sort of fluctuating up and down a little bit uh, between the 4 and 5 mark. Again, pretty sure it'll go up. We, are, we can get them at the moment for a minimum of €5.50. Of course, it'll be cheaper in other languages. I fully expect, though, this to go up over the next few weeks. Next, we move on to Milfy Mummy. I just wanted to cover this because of its absolutely ridiculous name. I'm sure you love the artwork, though, you little weirdos. Uh, these are a solid two cents a piece for those of you who are degenerate enough to want to play this deck. Or maybe you just want to get one for that misses you don't have yet. We all know Yu-Gi-Oh! players don't really get significant others, so let's not pretend that they do. Or maybe you just want it for yourself because you're one of them people who has some weird urges. Next, we're going to take a look at through some of the Ligma cards. Dogmatica, as they prefer to call it, DCG. I don't prefer to call it that. I think Ligma is a way better name. Uh, we've got the Waifu Tax card of the set. €17 Euros a minimum, but most of them are floating around that €20 Euro mark. I expect, again, this will be another one that does come down a little bit, although I don't think too much more. It is worth noting that this is a card that you need a playset of if you're going to play this deck. So, of course, that will keep the prices a little bit higher. And, in fact, probably the most valuable ultra rare in the the set. Next, looking at Fleur de Lis, which surprisingly is actually worth less than Ecclesia at this rate. Uh, I'm not sure that you necessarily play three of these anyway, so that maybe is partially why. And again, we've seen with the other secrets is coming down. However, this is relatively high compared to the majority of secrets in the set. Again, something that you are going to need to pick up if you want to play Ligma. Uh, and it's just one of those cards that I guess is going to probably float around this price range. Next, we're looking at Ligma Maximus. This is one of those cards that maybe is played at one, two, or three, depending on the build you prefer. A lot of people are cutting this all together or only playing the one copy, and that is what we're seeing in the price absolutely running down into the ground. It's unsurprising, really, this is the kind of thing that happens in these first week or two following on. 15 euros a pop for one of these, and again, you're probably only going to need the single copy, if any at all, for your deck. Next, looking at Nadir Servant, one of the best cards in the set, absolutely no doubt about it. If you play Ligma, you're going to absolutely need three copies of this card, I imagine, in your repertoire. And we're seeing that in the price here, a minimum of €55 Euros at the moment. Expect these to continue to rise up where the demand is increasing for the deck. It's fantastic, by the way. I played against it today. I was really, really impressed with how it goes. And if you do want to see more on that, of course, I've got a video that teaches you how to play and all the basics that you need to know about the deck. Uh... Cheeky pun there, you'll be able to see the link on the screen, of course. Um, but yeah, one that you're going to absolutely need to get hold of, and of course, that is what we're seeing in the price range here. Next, we're looking at Fallen of Albaz, one that I was concerned might also be high, but not an awful lot of builds are playing it, or certainly not in high numbers. As a result, we're seeing the price pretty low. Most variants don't really need to run it, it's just one of those cards that they've got the option to do so. So again, it's probably worth picking up a playset of at this kind of price, another 10 euros to get your playset, just in case you decide to play it or need to play it. Or of course, maybe the uh, the builds will change direction over time and you want access to it. Now's as good a time as any before those prices inevitably spike up if and when it does start to see play down the line. Okay, so we're moving on to some of the Starlight Rares. I wanted to take a quick look at these before we move into our next section. I want to see what the going rate is on these for those of you who are, let's say, well off enough to be considering purchasing a copy of one of these cards. DD Crow at the moment at €525 Euros at a minimum, and then they're fluctuating all the way up to that ridiculous kind of price to the bottom, which, of course, nobody is paying in their right mind. But probably more reasonably, you're looking 525 to 600 depending on where you buy from. Again, a high-end card, and if you want a play set, you're certainly going to have to spend a good chunk of money. Next up, we have Win the Win Channeler. Of course, with all of these Starlights, you tend to get your cheaper options in the sets, which are a, well, a certain fraction of the price of those weird staples that we always see that go crazy high. These are currently €230 Euros for cheapest. The average is around €250 Euros in general. Some of these, although pushing towards that 300 mark quite quickly as we go further down the list. 
Next we have Guy the Magical Knight of Dragons. This actually looks really, really nice in Starlight. It's a shame the card is absolute trash. Uh, nobody in their right mind really wants this to be playing with. This is definitely why we're seeing the price so cheap compared to other cards like DD Crow for obvious reasons. It's not a staple. It's not really a card that's going to see much play. It's probably a cool thing to have in your binder and certainly something that people would be more than happy with pulling. I certainly would be at this kind of value. But they are between that 185 and 200 euro mark over all. Um, I do expect that these ones at the bottom end here will disappear quite quickly and push this up more towards the 250 mark and long term of course we will see this price sort of recover quite a bit from the 360-ish it was originally. Uh, again over time these things are going to hold some really good value. Next we move on to Ecclesia again with the waifu tax coming in strong. 400 euros at a minimum pushing all the way up to around the 450 mark and of course continuing to go up depending on who you want to buy from i expect again that this is probably about the right kind of price from this uh 400 euros a pop if you want to place it, a, <laughs> a nice 1200 euros for you good sir uh yeah whatever works for you i guess Triple Tactics Talent, unsurprisingly, one of the more expensive of the Starlights. We're seeing Raffle Nevin coming in here at a nice 529, and then they're heading up towards that 550, 600, and beyond mark. The average price is probably sat somewhere, I don't know, maybe around the 600 mark, I would guess. Uh, so 529 doesn't seem too bad. There are people with play sets there, as you can see, for a fraction more. And if you're going to go in that far, well, what's an extra 30 uh, euros, right? Next, I wanted to take a look at some of the Toon Chaos cards. We are going to look at the Collector's cards later on, but I wanted to pick out some of the choice cards, I would say, from this set and see how they're getting on over time. So, Mortal Phoenix Gear Freed. This is a deck that I played against today for the first time physically in person. I played against it twice, actually. Shout out to you, Broads. Uh, one win, one loss against him, so not too bad. Uh, certainly a deck that you don't want to let them go first. I made that mistake against him and got an absolute pasting as a result. His deck profile is going to be coming up on the channel soon as well, so keep an eye out for that um but these are around the 22 to 24 euro mark is about the right kind of range a little bit cheaper actually than i had anticipated i thought this would be one of the more expensive cards but it is at a pretty reasonable price point in my opinion this whole deck to be fair as long as you've got your staples already of course is actually pretty cheap overall to run if you've got access to your halka fibrax engine all of that like ahead of time you're looking about 100 euros maybe for the core I guess maybe a little bit more, I suppose, if you factor it all in. Uh, I don't know. My maths is terrible. But you get the point. It's not very expensive overall for a core. Uh, and that's something people should be pretty happy about, in my opinion. Certainly very, very playable at a good kind of level. Next, we move on to Chaos Space. One that has actually, by the looks of it, started to recover a little in price. This is a really, really solid card. Of course, we know we are going to get that unlimited print coming uh, later on in the year, which will, of course, drive the prices down. But people are always going to prefer their first editions. It is worth noting as well that this is a really solid card that, again, you probably just want to have a playset kicking about. Because if you're going to play any kind of Chaos build or anything that can benefit from that, then this is going to be something you absolutely must run in those decks. Again, around the €4.50 Euro mark to €5, Euros, this is really not too bad. But again, we are seeing the overall trajectory slowly increasing. Next up, we're looking at Infernoble Knight Renaud. This is another one that has started to recover heavily. In fact, the price is... is the price is, is? The price is are drastically increasing over time we're seeing these around a 30 euro mark at a minimum they were 10 euros less a week ago give or take um and we're seeing these again all the way up to that 40 plus euro mark people are really starting to lighten up to this deck and realize how good and fantastic this actually is definitely one of the better decks for going first of the format in my opinion and one of the ones with the more likely longevity if you ask me again just one of those things and also it's worth noting the noble knights are one of those cool Cool cult classic decks, cult following decks, I should say. Uh, and we're seeing that again in the price because the demand for them is high. Next up, we're looking at the ultra rare copies of Extravagance. I'd be interested to see how this is getting on. But again, these are sat at the same sort of prices that the secrets were just before the release of this set. Nobody expected this to be as short as it was in you know, considering the fact that we were also getting the, the collector's version as well in the same set. But again, the price is going on through. Staples, it just goes to show you that these are some of the best investments you can absolutely pick up, especially when you can get them cheap. They hold really good value, as we're seeing here. A nice minimum 40 euros a pop, close to 45 on average. Again, 100 and... What's my maths going at? A lot. It's a lot for a playset, but it is one of those cards that you absolutely need for some 
Dex. We move on to the Chaos Creator, which is around the 17 to 20 euro mark on average. I really, really like this card. I think this is a really cool card that people should have access to at any given time. Uh, it can certainly go off in the right kind of builds. Of course, it makes Thunder Dragons a little bit more playable than they were before. But at the moment, they're still kind of dead ass with no Colossus. But there you go. Um, again, around that 17 to 20 euro mark, not too bad. I don't think we'll see it come down much more than it is. It certainly isn't going to go below sort of 15 euros or so. Uh, and again, I'm not sure that it's going to spike up anytime soon. I think this is a really good medium price point for you to pick this up if you're interested in getting your hands on them. Toon Blackluster Soldier, uh, the ultra rare version around 17 euros up to around the 20 mark uh, on average. Again, this has sort of been yo-yoing around the same sort of price point. I don't really think this will come down. There's always going to be demand for Toon cards. And I think long term, if anything, this may even go up, particularly the collector rare version, which we'll get to shortly. Definitely one of those cards that's maybe worth holding on to for a bit long term value, even as an ultra rare, as the lower rarity of the two. This will still command a good price point, I think, over time. Speaking of which, we're looking at the collector rare version of this. Now, around a 230 euro mark, I honestly think that this is a really not so bad pickup to consider getting hold of. If you can get hold of these at this kind of price range and you're happy to wait the long game, I think 230 euros is perfectly reasonable. You may see these go up to sort of uh, starlight prices depending on how it goes. Of course, it's a big gamble with these. We haven't seen the collector rares before, so we don't know for certain. But I think that this will be a really good one for the future. Sardis Dragon Collector Rare, around the 275 euro mark, give or take. Again, another one of these cards that's got that kind of cult following. Everybody loves Stardust Dragon. It's one of those cover cards, if you will, the likes of Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and Stardust Dragon all fall into that same kind of classic context of instantly recognizable cards for fans of the game. And that is why you see these at a relatively high price point overall. Again, long term, I think that this could have a really solid value. It is worth noting though, it's a question of whether people would prefer this or say, for example, Ghost Rares, um, which may indeed keep a ridiculous price point as well. So there is something to consider with that in mind. I wanted to take a look at Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Again, the Collector Rare version. It's worth noting that this is the post errata one, so it's not quite as nice to read or look at. But of course, it's a high rarity, uh, a, a card that, you know, is a classic. It's a notorious card, one of the most powerful cards ever printed, particularly before the errata. And that is why it will continue to hold a decent value. It's probably far less playable than, of course, the older version was, but something that will keep the value high. Pot of Desires Collector Rare, 115 euros. Actually, not too bad. Me personally, I'd probably much rather have the ultis if I'm going to play anything. But again, the Collector Rares are really, really nice and definitely not too bad a price point for one of these cards that is a staple for 115 euros a pop. Speaking of staples, Psy Frame Gear Gamma, 145 euros at minimum. And it looks like overall they are slowly, slowly creeping up you could at one point get these under the 100 euros mark so if you did do that you've made a smart move because they have now increased by 50 percent in terms of their value again one i think over time will slowly creep up Next, take a look at Chaos Space the Collector's Rare, which has gradually started to come down. Again, one that I hadn't really expected to dip this low, but I guess it's one of those things where it's not played in every kind of deck. Again, Chaos Space is a really cool thing to have access to, but long term, will it be as insane or as powerful as it is now? Who knows? And I think that that may be why we're seeing this price as low as it is. Again, 124 euros. Me personally, if I'm going to punt on any of these, I'd be definitely picking up the Zyze over this. That's just my opinion. Or I'd spend the extra and get the gammas. If you're looking for an investment, I don't think that this is necessarily the one to go for. Toon Harpy Lady, 69 euros. I think that this is actually crazy low. I think that this could really, really go up long term. If you've got hold of one of these, I really do think you should keep hold of it. Toon fans are wild and will pay wild prices for cards, especially collector rares. I think long term, this is a really, really good pickup if you've got hold of one. If you're someone that's buying, now is probably as good a time as any because, again, long term, I think you're going to get really good value out of these. Another card that we covered earlier, Immortal Phoenix Gear Free. They're under 100 euros for the cheapest now, around 100 euros for the rest of them. Again, not too bad a price range. Uh, it depends how many copies of this you want to pick up, of course, as to how much it's going to set you back. I don't think this is actually a crazy high price for a collector's rare. Again, one that could go up in value over time, certainly more long term. Um, but it isn't an absolute necessity in the game, and that's why we're seeing the price a little bit cheaper at the moment. 
Toon page flip, a solid under 50 euros mark, around 45 is the average. Um, another one that's kind of weird that I think that it's this low, again, I could really see it going up over time, being a Toon card. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's certainly how I feel about this, at least. Uh, I do think a 47 euros are definitely too cheap, in my opinion, for what they are. Chaos Daedalus, or whatever the fuck it's called, nobody cares about this card, and that is why it is only 50 euros a pop for a collector's rare. I feel really bad for anyone that opened their box and only pulled this. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't really because it's the value of the box back, but you know, there's definitely better collector's rares you could have pulled. Chaos Valkyria, I actually think this is a bit of a sleeper one. This card's actually really, really nice, and I think it's a really cool collector's rare to have. And I think it's a pretty reasonable price point at around the 70 euro mark. Again, not one that I think is going to go crazy high or anything like that, but one that could, you know, sort of keep its value really quite well. I don't see it really coming down anytime soon. Again, not expecting to go up too much either. So it's all entirely up to you. Do you want to play the long game and hope that it goes up in value as a collector's card, or do you just stick and or you know do twist on it and just get rid of it now i guess Continuing with the Toon cards that we saw earlier, around the 50 to 60, even 70 euro mark for Toon Bookmark. Again, another one that could potentially be good value later on down the line, because of course Toon players are absolutely wild. I like their high rarity cards, and they only ever seem to get one print, so they will always have good value for sale. We move on to the Chaos Creator Collector's Rare, around the 80 euro mark. Again, I don't think it's too bad. It's not a sort of meta-defining card or an absolute staple, so of course, that's why we're seeing the price as low as it is. A really cool pickup maybe for down the line. Again, with all these Collector's Rares, they're a bit of a gamble. We don't know how much value they will hold down the line, but I expect that they won't go down too much, if anything at all, and potentially are good for the long game. And the last of our collector's rares, unsurprisingly, it does hold a really good price point. Blacklister Soldier Envoy at the beginning, 270 euros at a minimum, 300 plus euros down the line. There are people who will continue to try and pick this card up, of course, because they want it in their GOAT decks. And everybody needs Max Rarity GOAT, as you very well know if you've ever played it. It's not acceptable to play anything less than Max Rarity, so of course... You need your collector rare Black Luster Soldier to go with it. And that is how we finish off our market watch, guys. We have covered all of the bullshit that you probably see or wanted to see and don't want to see. And as you can tell, I'm getting very tired by all of the bollocks that I'm talking. So that is all for today's Market Watch. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've really enjoyed this. Hopefully enough to hit subscribe so that you can check these out every single Monday. Like I say, just taking a look at that European side of the market, maybe see if those of you who are in North America or elsewhere, in fact, are getting fleeced. Or maybe we are the ones getting fleeced. Who knows? Only one way to find out, I guess, by watching this. We do do other kinds of content as well. I do combo videos, deck profiles, uh, locals vlogs, uh, how to play videos and just about anything else that a YouTuber should do in order to try and get you to come along and watch the channel. If there is anything you want to see, of course, do let me know. If there's anything you want me to cover on these Market Watch as well, I'm very, very easy to find if you're out and about on Facebook. And you can go ahead and drop me a line or maybe message me uh, through any variety of my social media channels and get in contact with me that way. Thank you very much in either case for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've really enjoyed this enough to hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.